Hey guys and welcome to this little intro to the timing chain video for the N20 engine. The uh, reason I'm making this video is to show some information on what needs to be done when you're changing the timing chain on the BMW N20 engine. This should work on many many cars, uh, 328s, 428s, 528s, X1, 2, 3, 4 I believe. Uh, in my case it's a Z4, uh, S-Drive 28i. Um, the reason I'm changing the chain is because it's uh, elongated and it started to slap around. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't film everything that I was doing as it was a very involved process. Uh, this job takes many, many hours and I wouldn't expect you to be uh, done in one day or two. You know, leave yourself a lot of time, uh, kind of look through the TIS, uh, those technical information um, uh, services or whatever they're called. So stuff that's going to be missing in the video is removal or dropping of the subframe. Uh, I don't have a video for that. I do have a video for removing the valve cover. You're going to have to do that as well. So go ahead and check that one out. I'll have a link in the description. Um, you will also need to remove the oil pan uh, from the bottom of the car. Uh, didn't make a video since all it, all it is is removing like 20 something uh, bolts from the bottom and then dropping the pen uh, and that should be pretty easy easily done by most home mechanics um, other than that you're gonna have to just really pay attention you know keep all your bolts safe and all that stuff you don't want to lose anything yeah I hope this video helps you out I spent a lot of time uh, researching and looking for any kind of video on you know on these engines and I couldn't really find anything other than 20 30 second videos of uh you know job already done hope it helps you with uh, your diy at home uh, if you like the video like and subscribe uh, really helps the channel out i'm just starting out so and every like is a big deal thank you guys enjoy the video i've been working on this car for a while now i'm getting ready to install the timing chain tool in order to um set timing and then I will be able to release that bolt and uh, replace, the, replace the timing chain, the guide, the tensioner that's all the way over there, and uh, a few other things uh, like that all the way at the bottom, that oil uh, chain pump as well. What I've done so far is I have dropped the subframe as you can see the subframe is laying on jack stands they gave me access to remove the oil pan see the oil pan is gone from the car it is all exposed obviously prior to that i drained the oil and things like that removed all the underbody protection stuff it's all over there at the moment so all that stuff has been removed and I have also taken apart the top, removed the head cover, the valve cover, I guess. So all that stuff has been removed. It's been kind of hours and hours of work. Even little things like the heat protection here was removed. All those things like that. I've also removed the serpentine belt and the pulley. Uh, the pulley was a little bit difficult to remove as uh, you can see that bolt's pretty rusted. And it was rusted on this part right here as well as here so it took some force and a lot of wd-40 uh, so you know the progress is coming the next thing is going to be to remove that crankshaft bolt after i've set the timing so i'm gonna try to film that part as well i tried to see if i can nudge it with you know this four foot extension as well as the breaker bar didn't go so well so I'm gonna see if I can use a longer pipe and see if I can nudge it off in order to do so you do have to have your flywheel locked so you have a special tool that locks the flywheel you should also be using this little tool to lock it however I can't get in there I would have to remove basically half of the exhaust the downpipe and all this stuff in order to install it so i'm gonna just use the uh, the positioning from the bottom hopefully that's gonna work for me all right let's get to timing the engine 
Of course, you will need special tools to set the timing. First one being this big chunk of metal. It's gonna go on the head like that. And we'll shade in. I'm gonna put the phone down and get it attached. So I've installed the first part of the tool. You just kind of put it in here and then you line up this bolt right there and this one with the existing holes that you have in your cylinder head. Screw those in nice and tight. Make sure I pushed it all the way there so there's enough space for the second part to come in. That's gonna be next. So I'll put these guides for the camshafts and as you can see they don't perfectly line up which means my engine's not in perfect top dead center. So I believe I have to adjust it just a little bit so they kind of sit flat. And then I should be able to screw them back in. All right, so this part's now installed. I screwed them in. No gap here, no gap there. Everything lines up. Let's go to the next step. So now I'm using the second part of the special tool as they call it. So this has the little knobs that go inside the timing wheels. Same here. I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna use the two screws to keep it in place. Get that in place, make sure it doesn't make sure it goes in straight. At this point, we're done with checking camshaft timing. As you can see, everything looks good. Everything fit, which uh, leads me to believe that the engine is in timing. Um, if it weren't to fit, then we'd have to adjust it. There are instructions on this um, as well on how to adjust. So you'd have to, you know, make sure your first cylinder is in TDC, uh, and then basically use these little markers right there, we can put a wrench in on both sides and ro rotate it until it is in, in timing and your um, bracket would fit. In order for us to remove the crankshaft bolt over there, we have to secure our oil pump uh, with a special tensioner, which is gonna be it right here. Uh, it will secure the chain tensioner and uh, keep it safe while we put a lot of torque on that bolt. Here are the simple instructions. Uh, you're going to fix the balancer shaft um, and maybe hold the sprocket if we're going to be removing that. For the oil change uh, in place using these tools. This one was like 50 bucks. I don't know why, but just a piece of a hunk of metal. And a few screws, but gonna need it. Let's get to it. We are under the car now. As you can see, this is where we're gonna be installing the tool. I'm gonna zoom in as it's kind of difficult to get in there. It's gonna go right there with that piston comes out. It's gonna go in there and hold that piston back so we can do, uh, so we can remove this bolt and not damage. Uh, any of this stuff in here. So more fun to come. I started, I wanted to uh, push to that cylinder back in and put this special tool as they call it, or just it's a uh, pin into the hole. It doesn't fit, it's too thick. So either they sent me the wrong part or I ordered the wrong part, but this is a special kit just for this, so I don't see how that would how that would be um, not fitting. Well, I'm gonna have to figure something else out. I used my own special tool, as BMW calls them, which was just an Allen wrench, and it went right in that hole. It was a little smaller diameter than the tool included, so it should work just fine. Time to remove this bad boy. After about 15 minutes of this breaker bar and this, I don't know, three, four foot conduit that I had at home, the freaking bolt is finally, finally 
loose. Took a while. Now I can just take it off with my hand. Just pure, pure, pure win. Satisfaction right here. Taking this thing out. Done. I think I can call it a night. It's about about midnight. Next thing we have to do is remove these pulse sensor on the exhaust and intake sides. They're just right here, and as you can see, they come up. So we got to remove these bad boys to get to the next step. Next thing we have to do is remove the chain tensioner, which is that bolt right there. Since it has to come out and it's about four or five inches long, we're gonna have to remove this vacuum unit as well. To do so, to do that, we're gonna have to release two bolts that are hidden underneath it, somewhere in there. And the tensioner has been removed. Now I can go ahead and remove the uh, central bolts for um, exhaust and intake shafts. And I guess after that I can just probably pull this out. We shall see. All right, so now we're removing the Vanos solenoid valve. This is the exhaust side. This is going to be the Vanos solenoid valve, and this is um, the pulse tensor wheel, both on the exhaust side. I'm going to very carefully put them in a separate box away from everything else. As you can see at this point, everything is pretty much loose. This can be removed now as well. I believe this is called the um, exhaust camshaft adjuster. There it is. All right, now we're just gonna do the same thing for the intake side. You definitely don't wanna mix these up, so You want to make sure you put them away safely in a neat order and mark them accordingly. So this is going to be intake, this is going to be exhaust. Alright, so it's the next day I'm working on the car again. Uh, as you can see I have removed the hub, I pulled out the hub from the crankshaft. That's how we did it, you put a couple screws in and just pull on it, it should come right out. There is a sprocket in there that normally goes onto here. So you kind of need to wiggle a little bit so it comes out. I have also taken out these plugs, these access holes. So, so you take the plugs out in order to access uh, those bearings or screws or whatever those are in order to take this plastic part out. Those are the two bearing journals that I just removed from the left and the right timing chain module. As you can see, I kind of keep everything organized. Otherwise, it's going to be a mess. The next step is going to be to remove these two bolts right here. And I believe after that, we should be able to pull the whole thing out. There's a 
timing chain. That's why we did all that work for it to remove this. I am now finally in the process of reassembly. I have it removed and installed a new seal. I'm about to install the hub. I'm gonna clean it up first. And then I'm gonna put a brand new hub bolt in because you shouldn't be reusing those. Um, it goes to up to 100 Newton meters plus 270 degrees of torque. So definitely want it to be brand new for, uh, for this function. Yet another night I'm working on the Z4 N20 engine. Uh, so at this point I've finally um, gotten these things installed, got the chain in, uh, got all of the brackets inside, set the bolt uh, in there as well. Uh, first time I put it in, I actually put the sprocket in correctly. And the way you uh, realize that is that that this wasn't going in right. Put some light on it. It was actually going in crooked. I kind of got it to go in, but then I realized that it even made the chain a little bit shorter, so I couldn't uh, get the chain over the sprockets. So as you can see now, there's a little bit of looseness until I put the tensioner in that goes in here. And once the tensioner is here, it's gonna tension the you can see it, it's gonna tension the chain and make it all good. Uh, so now I'm gonna set the timing, put the timing um, brackets or whatever you call them on, put the little sensors in here and kind of start putting it back together once I set the timing. I have now put in all the plugs in there, put them to crack torques. I'm gonna install this pre-tensioning tool this goes in instead of a tensioner and keeps the chain from being all floppy while you while you set your timing. Now that the pulse sensors are installed and the vanus, I'm gonna put this tool in and align these little uh, things sticking out with with the holes in uh, in the sensors. This will set the timing for us. And then once this is in, I can tighten through the holes in the tool to make it permanent. All right, and the timing has been adjusted. As you can see, everything looks good. I used that tool that I showed earlier. Tighten these bolts to 55 Newton meters, as well as 55 degrees of rotation for the torque. I've removed the, the pre-tensioner tool and now I'm gonna actually install the tensioner. You wanna get a new one, as these are usually the problem. Uh, well, these are the ones that go bad and cause all the issues with the chain and all that stuff. And I can even show you the difference. This is the new one. This is how hard it is to squeeze. Look, I can barely push this down. This is the old one. No problem. So, new one going in. just in there, just gonna move this out of the way. I realized that at the end of this video, I don't have a complete job shown or the engine starting. Unfortunately, in my case, the timing chain wasn't the only issue with the engine. Um, so I kind of, you know, threw the wrench and um, left it at that. I am changing the engine on the car, so I'll get a new one soon. However, the timing chain job was successful. The engine did run uh, however, there was additional knocking coming from the engine um, kind of deeper inside, which is a ball bearing, not ball bearing, uh, rod bearings and um, well, maybe some valves knocking. Uh, I, I did not choose to proceed with this engine uh, as I just felt like it was going to be too unreliable. Stay tuned. Uh, you'll see what I did with the car next. I hope you enjoyed the video and it helped you a little bit. I'll see you in the next one.